Hey guys, so I am here with the new Salcony Kinvara 12s, which I ordered in from Durango Running Company. Shout out, thank you very much. I'm very excited and thanks for ordering them in. So I went for just a quick run around the block with them, just a quick preview, and they were so, so light and it fell very fast after a long day of sitting in the cart. <laughs> um, so here they are. So they are very light shoe, pretty flexible and twisty. They are a road shoe, as you can see. There's a little bit of dirt on the bottom from my run, but super light, super fast. And this is the Power Run um, midsole. Pretty, pretty nice. And there's not a lot of material on the upper, and it's a four millimeter drop. And so I'm very excited to test these out, go for an actual run, and see how it feels. I'll keep you updated. Saga. First of all are the clothes from the top down. Cap, very cool, handmade here in Durango, Colorado. We always have to wear eye protection and we have to have gloves. I usually go through whew, three, four pair of gloves per trail work season shirt thankfully um, it breathes really well today is the third consecutive day of 100 plus temps on the trail I usually work five to six hours if not more on a trail day I've been blessed by being able to get some solo missions and that is what I love really where I just take my pack my uh, modular tools and get to work by myself in what is usually a very quiet uh, environment, but our train uh, is a little boisterous in the morning. Uh, these are our heavy uh, car hoop pants. The shoe, I uh, got some compression socks. And then the shoe of choice is Solomon uh, Speed Cross. Very aggressive lug pattern to the Solomon Speed Cross, and I can tuck up the laces up and under so that there's no dangling thing. Edward Corico, Edco, he was a Eastern Black dissident. I met him when I managed Ferentino's gym in Boulder, Colorado in the early 80s. He was a mountaineer and he built this pack for me. And only, I mean, that was like, how many years ago? Decades ago. First thing is hydration, especially now. So this is a Pedialyte um, electrolyte. We've got Fortune Delight from Sunrider Whole Food Herbs. Uh, this is a very hydrating and tasty tea. So we're looking at about 100 ounces of water for the five hours of work I'll be out. File, flat file. Gotta have tools sharp. Pretty punk. This is called a trail box. And I have selected for today's digging work, uh, Rogo. Now, ta-da! So with that tool, I can dig, I can move earth, and uh, a lot of my work is to restore drainages or create new drainages. The whole thing is to keep the water uh, sheeting off the trail and to build a trail that is sustainable for the generations ahead. That's what we do. Medical kit, folding saw, this is kind of a trick because I can do an undercut here and then a straight cut here and it locks in position. Uh, with uh, skilled hands, this thing is as effective as a chainsaw. Back up folding saw, tools break. And this is my backup uh, loppers to trim branches, some rain uh, gear more plastic bag and this plastic bag is toilet paper poop happen this is kind of like trail maintenance uh first aid stuff uh little clues i, I use this uh, to demonstrate help demonstrate 
to volunteer. And then we got some snacks, stingers, we got some teriyaki. So I wish I could take you along. It's a very beautiful passion of mine and it's really beautiful off-season training because uh, it's just several hours of upper body, lower body. Often I'll ride this pack, weighs about 30, 35 pounds, and then I'll ride my mountain bike into um, the work site. Uh, today I got to walk right behind my uh, condo, river pad, and work on Falcon Trail. I've got a lot of digging to do today, some drainage work, and uh, some cutback of vegetation. I hope you found that informative and uh, I bet you near you there is a trail organization that you can volunteer for and uh, learn more about how to preserve um, sustainable trails. So first run in with a new shoe, we're going to take it for a track workout. It's very light so it should do great. Um, four by 800 meter repeats, so in this uh, 98 degree heat, always fun. So Daywell's gonna show you the runner's knot. Yeah. Through the rabbit hole. Take a Two holes here yes to make that runner's knot which just simply adds really tight control over that uh, collar fit right yes for sure all right and you're a big fan of the runner's knot is that correct oh yeah it helps tremendously you can just feel the difference yeah I think once you run in a shoe with a runner's knot and then one without it's kind of a no-brainer yeah no-brainer <laughs> all right four by eight hundred here we come good luck high heat but you know what? You've raced in high heat before, so this is a good yep. training. Got to turn yep. that doorknob. All right, let's do it. So, are you thinking of doing like a 630 mile pace for these repeats right now because we have all oh, four of them <laughs> so given the heat um, really we're we're gonna not pay attention to the stopwatch that much okay. we're gonna go by feel and what I'm looking for is for you to kind of run at a tempo pace where you're hurting but you still have another gear okay and like if someone was side beside me in a sprint, I can drop them type of gear type of thing, yeah? Right, okay. yeah. <laughs> so uh, you're in, you know, you're building pain tolerance, but you still have another gear or two to shift into. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. All right, here we go. Two, one. First 800, 308. Now we go into a full recovery mode. That means her heart rate reaches a level that corresponds with her recovered heart rate. And then we got three more. This is not easy. It's not easy. It's not even easy to watch. Whew, hurts so bad. Eight hundred, baby. Do you think we can take a little heat off of the first 400 and then maybe bring it home a little? So more of a negative split. Yeah. So instead of 130, 
for the 400 we're maybe 140. 140 to 145 about yeah. that yeah important to get a full recovery on tempo because even though it may seem like you're taking a while ultimately it'll help your performance to become hopefully faster and negative split so if we need to take a little longer because of the heat or just how we're feeling today that's totally okay you know what else helps yogi squatting so a yogi squat heels down on the earth as Dewa is demonstrating and it stretches that lower back really good through the glutes IT band and the frontal shin ankle cuff fantastic to you know not you don't drop into a yogi squat immediately after you finish an interval but you know after you're like halfway recovered get down and breathe into your yogi squat me, i think like i can gauge tempo at about 130 to 135 two one boop. Okay, so pretty much these things, Salcony so Convara 12s. So they're practically track shoes, just with a little more cushioning. They're just as light, I guarantee it. They were great on today's run, kept my joints nice and soft, even with about 18 minutes combined total on the track at high intensity. These things did great. Noble Saga. Welcome to Champion Venture at the Colorado Trailhead in our big backyard. I thought I was going to do the intro. I'm sorry? I thought I was going to do the intro. You just accused me of having feminine legs. <laughs> well, you kind of do, bud. <laughs> hmm. Don't know what to think. But anyway, oh. we are at Champion Venture and we're going to go up Colorado Trail a little bit. And then we're going to go up and climb Cumberland into Kennebec Summit and back down. So I'll click to a link somewhere here where instead of driving Black Thunder all the way up here, 20 some miles, I rode my bike from way back in Durango. I am feeling the fart lick from yesterday. That's like Scottish. What, am I supposed to be German? You're supposed to be like Norwegian. Oh. I'm feeling the... <laughs> <laughs> Are you sad? No! <laughs> I'm feeling the fart like from yesterday. That is so like Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> This is the infamous Slick Rock. It's not so infamous with my hikers as it is horses and mountain bikes. Oh. It's cut into this extremely steep talus slope. Yep. Now you can see the big snow field here. We're going to cut underneath that. And right there you can see the old Muldoon mine. One of the most productive mines throughout the 18, late 1800s. And then we're going to take this shoulder up to the summit of Cumberland reverse down and then behind this cliff there's another peak um, called Canada Peak. So uh, yeah so we've been climbing for half an hour. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Wow you get here so quickly. Oh my gosh. Hi, babe. Kennebec Pass. That's our second peak. Kennebec Peak. And behind me is the old boarding house where the miners would live during the summers.
And now, here's what's really crazy. This is the world's highest, it is a double toilet outhouse. Uh, <laughs> I ain't going in that. Oh my gosh, no. You need to use the ladies room? No. There you go. Not at all. I'll go behind the bush, thank you. <laughs> What's happening? 